Good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Soulful Leadership bonus call. My name is Sahar Nafal, founder of the Soulful Leader community. I am a soul guidance coach and the trainer of the Soulful Leadership program, online program. So I welcome each and every one of you here. For those of you who are regular participants, welcome, welcome, welcome. And for those of you who are here as guests of participants or guests of our wonderful speakers today, which I'll be introducing in just a little bit, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Soulful Leader community. This is a beautiful platform in where you get to learn how to alter the old way of being, doing to a new way of being. So in just a little bit, as we welcome more and more of you to join us, I'm going to go ahead and share a little bit about uh, what the program is going to be about today. Um, so thank you for showing up to our call this morning. I welcome our participants, of course. Thank you. We continue to see more and more of you participate. I love that. It's been a journey with us since December. And a big welcome to those of you who have just joined us. Uh, and of course, our wonderful three guests whom I will be introducing in just a little bit. I love seeing all of you here today and this morning. And as always, I always say, remember, with more people getting on the spiritual path, a lot more spiritual energy will flood the earth. It is what will heal the planet. It is what will heal the planet. All right, we're going to go ahead and start with a blessing. I always begin with blessing our container, and then we'll dive into the, to the day. All right, perfect. We're going to go ahead and start with a blessing. I always begin with blessing our container, and then we'll dive into the, to the day. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and start by taking a couple of deep breaths in from our nose. And release with a soft sigh. Let's do that. Go ahead and do that one more time. And release with a soft sigh again. As I ask our guidance and support from our higher selves, from Archangel Ascended Masters, only light beings to be here with us in this beautiful container. Container of beautiful, soulful ladies. Souls that are on the path to empower and inspire not only themselves, but humanity and to create a change in our world. I'm grateful for all the guest speakers that showed up to share their wisdom with us and their experiences. All right, let's go ahead and do a little container prayer. Dear spirit guides, God, divine mother, angel, open our hearts and strengthen our will. So we are continually rising in our leadership, mastery, prosperity, courage, confidence, as we come together in community to create most magnificent collective web. Open our creativity to support each other and support others who are looking for guidance and healing right now. Bless our container. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is, and so it is. Let's go ahead and take one more deep breath release beautiful our hearts are one our souls are one we are one thank you thank you thank you let's go ahead and start with little housekeeping and logistics today so our time together will be about 90 minutes and then i'll make sure to give you breaks or actually we're all adults so whenever you need to take a break to drink some water or go to the restroom please help yourself we might do some stretching exercises with Monica today. Let's see if we have time. I also invite you to be open to receiving and surrendering to what is and allow the flow and see where it will lead you. Just be open and surrender because I have a feeling on this journey you will take, you'll be surprised. There may be some things that will come up for you and transformation will shift because we have such incredible, powerful people here right now that are doing powerful work on earth. And there may be something new that you will unfold that will unfold for you that you'll be very very happy. If you have any questions, please make sure to write them down in our chat box. We have our wonderful Julia who's here to support me as well. So just say hello, Julia. Uh, and if you have an insight, please write it down. We'd love for you to engage, 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 participate, ask questions. There will be time and opportunity for you to ask questions 
to our wonderful soul experts today. And of course, if you are uh, if you are not muted, please do go ahead and mute the your video and just being paying attention because you never know what will happen. I'll also make sure to have plenty of time for questions at the end. If anybody has any questions, not just for the uh, for the speakers, but also for myself and about this program. And let's play full out and participate as much as we can because we are here to create a beautiful container as we elevate and uh, have our frequency be much, much higher. So we're, again, we're here to heal the planet. All right. All right. So today we have three souls who are gifted with what they do. Each will be sharing about between 15 to 20 minutes of her expertise and experience of how her work has transformed transformed her life and the lives of others that she is working with. Because I'm blessed to have personally worked with each and every one of these wonderful souls that are here, right? Um, they have impacted and transformed my life somehow, some way. And I'm here inviting them to join you because I wanna share this opportunity and this experience with each and every one of you. But shortly we will be introducing them to you. But meanwhile, let me go ahead and check in and see how everybody's doing. I want to see if you are new here, if you are brand new here and you are a guest of somebody, go ahead and just say hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Titana, who else is a guest of somebody here? You want to go ahead and wave? All right. Hopefully we'll have more people join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you for being here. I see Kathy's here. That's brand new as well. Thank you, everyone. Excellent, excellent. And this is, by the way, will be, um, we'll, we're going to send the replay to about 10,000 people. So most everyone will be watching it afterwards. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. So let's go ahead and just dive in. I wanna make sure that we have plenty of time for our wonderful speakers to share their brilliance, as well as you asking the Q&A. But before we go ahead and do that, I'm going to go ahead and share the slides. Again, with you. again welcome to the Soulful Leadership. Our, um, the reason I did this is to help women who are on here, on earth, creating change and shifts for people's, um, for whoever it is that's called to work with them to alter the old way of doing to a new way of being. And we started in December. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit about a review of what we have been doing here together. And this is a review for our, for our participants as well as a review for those of you who are maybe curious to learn more about this program that we'll be relaunching in April again. Uh, so these are, by the way, uh, we welcome the Soulful Expert. This is a bonus class. And these are three amazing women, which I will introduce in just a little bit who will be part of this program. So we always started in our class with the four soulful leadership archetype. We have three, four different archetypes, the hidden leader, the working hard leader, the wise leader, and the evolved leader. And how these archetypes came to be is during the pandemic, I had paused, my work has paused from March all the way till June. And during this time, I made a choice to be a hidden leader to rebirth what I really wanted to do here on earth. For the past 10 years, for those of you who are not familiar with what I have been doing, I have been building community starting 2008. Actually, today we celebrate, I celebrate my 13th year. It is so divine that we chose today, my anniversary of my business of 13 years of leading community for women. I have done over 300 live events. We've brought many experts and amazing uh, thought leaders to our stage. We have supported and helped over 25 to 30,000 people globally through our live events and through our now online programs. So I have been on this journey for 13 years. And so I decided to go inwards and from that connecting to spirit guides, I was given all the information that I need in order for me to develop this new work and it's called the soulful leadership. And this archetype showed up and I decided, not I decided through the guidance of spirit, I was guided to do 100 sessions for anyone who is called 
to do and wanting a soul guidance session. I know many of you have done it. For those of you who have not been gifted a soul guidance session, again, towards the end, I'll give you an opportunity to do that. So I would just do 25 minutes scanning of the body and I see images and there were patterns with all these hundred people that I've done these images. It was for the month of July, August, September and uh, July, August, September and October. And I noticed that there were images that um, were in a pattern. There were hidden leaders that were hiding and saying, this shall pass. They were working hard leaders who were working hard, working hard from the old way of doing rather than new way of being. They were wise leaders who did everything exactly they should. They had everything together, but yet there was something missing. They haven't really taken that next level. And then the evolved leader was our last archetype. And that archetype was just phenomenal because that is the archetype we're all leading to become. The hidden leader, was someone who was hiding behind the scenes, kept to themselves. They limited their engagement and to close friends and family. They feared to engage with clients and perhaps they were very limited to who they worked with. They feared of being seen. They feared of finding, they always found excuses to engage with people and they're always hiding behind the mask. So they may have showed up that they're happy, but deep inside they were confused, they were lost, uncertain about what to do next. Or they're always saying, I'm not ready to be engaged right now. I'm not ready to show up to the world right now. Then we had the working hard leader. This is, could be a more perfect image, right? They're comfortable with being seen. You know, they're engaging multiple platform online, but engaging like uh, with my mic, but quick and fast connections. They're always working hard, working hard, working hard. They're engaging from their head and not from their heart. There's always fear about not being engaging enough. So they're constantly all over the place, working this, 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 and that. And then they may engage with the wrong people because they're not really focused and there's not much clarity about what their purpose of their engagement, what their purpose of them working, and also not present when they are engaging. So they lose out on opportunities. And this is from... Um, my experience of seeing over and over and over, over 100, right now I've done over 130, maybe 140 uh, soul guidance session, and I'm working with such amazing people. We I'll probably have worked since July with maybe about 25 people individually, privately. And so this keeps showing up over and over and over again. Now, the wise leader is clear about their message and engagement. They calculate the time of engagement. They must engage with specific type of people. Um, they're always like, I'll engage if you do this too. They engage with wisdom and balance and will, uh, will be connecting to the right people. But at the same time, they're not taking their business to that next level, right? They're not taking their business to that next level. They're just being safe at where they are. And then we have the evolved leader. And by the way, if you relate to any of them that you have not like related to, for those of you who are brand new, please in the uh, chat box, write down and let me know which leader, which archetype do you relate to? Are you a hidden leader? Are you working hard leader? Sometimes you could have a little bit of both. Are you a wise leader? Or are you now the evolved leader that you are? So evolved leader are leaders who have just finally got out of hiding, stopped working very hard, and their wisdom continued, but they evolved taking it to the next level. If you are an evolved leader, and that's where the program is all about, you are living in the now, you desire, your desires are manifesting within you, your focus is on love and gratitude and not fear, inner knowing of being supported by the universe, by God, by your guides, you remembrance that in each moment you can change your experiences for the future. Your world is fluid and you are living with ease and grace and you lead with love. You only know you are now you, you only know you are now and you are fulfilled and you are being and not doing. Everything is happening to you with ease and grace. And this is what the program that we are here, what, what I'm, I'm, I'm meant to do is to help people to stop the, the doing and step into the being in order for them to evolve, to become the evolved leader that you are, that they are. 
Um, through the process, there were a, uh, a, a, a method that came through me and it was called the altar process. The, it's about asking, first one is about asking. So our first module, we learned about how to ask for what we want. Our second module was about listening. So we listen to the divine, to the voice of the divine. We listen to the voice of silence and connected to that. And th then we took action. That was our third module. We took action, what we listened to, what we asked for. We also engaged. And that was our last module was engaged. And last but not least on the fourth, we we're diving into receiving and we're talking about money and abundance and how we're able to receive and become the divine. We also did a Facebook Live. So I just want to remind each and every one of you, I have not seen a Facebook Live yet. We did a tutorial, our wonderful Julie did a tutorial on how to do a Facebook Live in our group only for those of you who want to get engaged. So we do things outside of just learning, practicing, and doing a Facebook Live is one of the things that we practice. We also shared and connected with our soul partners because each and every one of you had their soul partner to talk with. For those of you who are brand new here, again, a soul partner was an important factor in our program in order for us to connect to other souls and share and be heard and be seen and be acknowledged and create new friendship. So this was the overall review of what we are here. So you can get the context of why we're here. So we're here because this is a bonus call. This is a bonus call for those who signed up to be part of the leadership. And I was guided and called to say, you know, what if we invite those who are interested in learning more um, outside of the participants. So I asked the participant to invite the friends and family. And I also asked the uh, wonderful presenters to invite their uh, community. And so we have some of you, welcome, welcome, welcome to this beautiful uh, day today. I'm so excited. I can't wait to dive right in. So let us welcome our soulful experts. Again, each one will be speaking between 15 to 20 minutes. Then we're going to open the lines after each and every one of them is complete with their conversation to you asking the questions. And I'll be asking some questions as well. We're going to start with my wonderful friend, Jan Jorgensen. And Jan is going to talk about how to let your voice lead the way so you can engage with your life, love, and success. So let me tell you a little bit about Jan before we dive in. And this is gonna, going to be a personal a testimony. I told the ladies, let me just share what my experience of you is. It's more impactful. So Jan and I have met, met about maybe seven or eight years ago. I was like three or four years into my business. And I just loved her energy. I was invited to attend one of her beautiful circles, women of circles at her house in the Bay Area. And it was like love at first sight. Like I, I met her and energetically, we had this amazing connection. We have been friends ever since. But one thing about her that helped me because she's an expert in helping women project their voice, their true essence of their voice in this world. I did courses with her. I did some classes and private coaching as well with her. And she helped me project my authentic voice to the world. One of the things that I remember, one of the, the, um, ceremonies that she was doing, she asked us and invited us to project our voice by sharing our, our names. And it was just so beautiful. In addition, she asked me, she thought, she said, think of your father. I don't remember exactly what the exercise was. That was like the most impactful time of my life to where I was able to project my true voice. And she said to me that you have your father's hand on your you know, like on the throat, like he was the one who was in control of energetically of me projecting my voice. And I didn't know it at the time. And it, she was so right on. I've done my inner work with my father who has passed, by the way, last October. God, God bless his soul. But like it was her doing these exercises with me and my awareness of how I wasn't projecting my true voice. Uh, in order for me to empower, inspire people. So you could imagine me as a leader being on stage with hundreds of people in my audience, and yet I wasn't able to be authentic in the way in which I was sharing my voice, right? And she thought she'll share more with you. She's just so dynamic, and I love her so much. I could literally spend the whole day talking about Jan, and our friendship is so deep. She's always there for me, and I'm always there for her. 
And so without further ado, I want to introduce my lovely, lovely friend who is a rock star in her industry, beautiful, beautiful Jan Jorgensen. And good morning, Sahar. Yes, when we're together, it's quite a talk fest. And I have watched you move into that authentic, commanding, heart-centered voice. And that gives me so much joy. So truly, your voice leads the way. And you might think my voice, yes, absolutely. The harmonics and the frequencies, the tone is telling you everything about me right now. It's almost as if we are painting a movie of our hopes, our desires, our fears as we speak. And throughout my life, uh, since I was a little girl, my dad yelled at me. Eh! I've always had a fear of authority figures and speaking up. So that path led me to different milestones and to become a registered nurse and to understand and to bring this information to you today. So I brought a little, uh, because I've approached it scientifically and spiritually, I'm going to do a screen share and we're going to uh, look at it that way. We're going to look at the science behind how we resonate or not resonate with other people, creating or not creating our own alignment in heaven. And then I understand Sahar told me that you um, are going to have a live Facebook where you're going to stand up there and I'm going to give you a, a fail-proof trick and uh, help you imagine an anchor, and mine is squeezing my leg. So at the end, be sure and say, Jan, what did you mean by squeezing your legs? And I'll tell you how that became my anchor. Okay, so can everybody see that? Uh, let's go ahead and stop this here now. I see it, yes. So our voices are a calling card to the world. And it means everything. When we sound, we are sounding our world. We are transparent. So it doesn't matter if you're saying things and you don't believe them because our voice is our calling card in our life. It broadcasts our fears, our hopes, our history. It's pretty much what they call the law of attraction. So we attract some situations over and over and over again until we shift our vocal frequencies. Change your voice, your voice itself, change your thoughts that direct your voice, or change your life. Because no matter what you want them to hear, if you're misaligned, this is what they hear. Chaos kind of upside down. Our intention how we guide the flow of words and energy out of our mouth means everything. So you're all muted, but go ahead and repeat after me. I am. I am. I am not. I am not. I am not I. I am not I. I am not I. Am I? Am I? I am not I. Am I? So we've taken those simple words and change the whole world with our inflection, our tone, the consonants and the vowels. And just to give a little thank you here, um, uh, Sahar is definitely a step forward in Jill Lublin. And here's a picture of me and my polka dot sandwich with two of my favorite leaders in helping women speak up in heart-centered authenticity. What I've learned is your voice is a magic wand or a misaligned message. So as I began investigating, I came across this machine and it's called Cymatics. That is my voice print. That is a sound coming out of my mouth with a form and that is bathing everybody else in the room. And as I speak, they have the same unconscious movements in their upper uh, 
nasopharynx. So it's a phenomenal thing. It's quantum entanglement. And I just saw this on Facebook. I thought it's fabulous. So when you are speaking, you are vibrationally uh, collaborating and working with other people. So if you have fear in your voice, which we can read now, this is called the portico. Over on the right, uh, the right hand bottom, I can tell percentage wise, if a woman is out of alignment with her words, mentally, physically, and emotionally. So in other words, what you think you're saying and what is coming across might be a different thing. Now, a person like Sahar is in her dominant frequency. When I first began this work, I was in 30% of my dominant frequency. And you can't be a leader if you are speaking from a place where people are doubting what you're saying. Then as a nurse and a science-based person, this came up for me. This is the voice bio. And in five minutes, I can track and look at a woman's health, her adrenals, her fears, her history, and the entire amount of energy in her body. This is a voice print, a little chaotic. This is a voice print of a person focused in task, delivering their message. So don't give up hope. We can bypass the stuck patterns in three ways. Number one, slow boat to China. Change your mind, your health, your patterns. Take charge with full consciousness. This is a spiritual path, and it is very important. But the next two steps kind of short-circuit it and give you processes. The second one is voice release, and I was able to develop that through science and spirit, and it takes about 20 minutes, and I understand Sahar will be offering that to some of her um clients. It's a process of meeting the frequencies and reprocessing that, going into that memory, that trauma that has caused the vocal issue to begin with. What I'm bringing you here today, because we have a short amount of time, is kind of an uh, unplugging mechanism, and it's how to open to divine flow in the moment so you can stand on that stage. You can be on that Facebook Live and be natural and open and relaxed. And this is the, um, the voice release, and I've done that with many, many of Sahar's um, groups in the past. So we all have anxiety, fear, and triggers. And um, I do feel that I have become an expert as a nurse. I've studied it, and I've sung my entire life. And I've been through every single ringer. <laughs> So I understand what you're going through, and I'm going to teach you the magic power of your vocal frequencies. And this little unplugging thing I learned working with hospice patients at the bedside. And essentially, to go in the pocket and to be the voice of heaven, to release fears and to resound trust and love into the universe, we have to let go. Sure, you can write down what you want to say. You can practice. But unless you open to divine flow and guidance, just as if you are speaking to that one person who needs to hear it, because let's, we are beginning to understand that we are not regular people. You are a visitor, you're a messenger, and you have to jump into the big bowl. You have to stick your head out of the consensus reality and access the information so that you can be a messenger that opens people's hearts so that we can create a new world here together. I see you smiling, Sahar. There we go. So essentially, how do we lift our thoughts and open the flow to the audience of one so that your message and your resonance becomes part of this puzzle to make the world whole again? Each of you holds one of those nodes. 
And here we are with the <laughs> queen of authentic uh, speech in, in every way. I thank her for letting me bring you this message today of how to engage by letting go with the Be the Light message. So I'm going to use the remaining time. It just takes a couple minutes. And you can use this powerful, powerful, powerful process to drop in when you are doing any live speaking. Even if you have to talk to your partner and it's something kind of heavy, this is it. Okay. So I call it the Be the Light three point process. And it's very simple. Sahara's already taught you part of it. Take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. We simply ask and intend that's your magic wand. We ask and intend to set a sacred space. We remove everybody else's energy and thoughts from our entire energetic field. We take another deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. We call in our spirit guides. And now we have emptied ourselves. We are surrounded by high vibrational beings. They are our cheerleaders. We simply open our crown chakra. We are the crowns, we are the messengers, we are the queens. And we allow the message to come through us and we just let it flow through. So when you press Facebook Live, and it takes a minute, it, you're actually on camera, so know to do this process a tiny bit before. Take your deep breaths. I ask and intend to set a sacred space. Empty yourself out. Create a beautiful healing tent. Call in your spirit guides. Open your crown chakra and let the message come through. And I'll tell you, working at the bedside with hospice patients, I can never remember the words to songs. I can never remember the melodies. But when I listened to the music of heaven, it just flowed through me and I saw the fear disappear. So I began doing it on stage and I began people saying, their heart saying, yes, that's what we've been waiting for. And that's what they're waiting for with you. So I'm going to put my uh, contacts in the chat and feel free to contact me and I'll send you that chart. I can send you YouTube so you can practice it. Yes. Now, I want to answer the question about the legs. Um, there was a time where I was wondering, is this path worth sticking on? It's so hard. And can you take me home? I said, take me home. Let me be done. So the angels took my consciousness up out of my body. And this had never happened before. And they took me up to this heavenly expanded place with people like Sahar. Expanded, beautiful beings, light beings. And they said, Jan, go back down in your tent and squeeze your legs and open your eyes. I said, what? And I did. And they said, squeeze your legs. Can you still hear us? I said, yes. They said, only in your limited perception were you ever separate from your heavenly home. You mm. squeeze your legs and we will come and speak through you. So once you master you're dropping in. Think of an anchor. Mine is squeezing my legs. You don't have to do that. Okay, back to you, Sahar. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that. You're amazing as always. You know how much I love you. She's probably the most invited back guest I've ever had for the past 13 years. So thank you for always sharing your brilliance. We're going to open the lines right now for those who have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the gallery view. Anybody has any questions about anything for Jan, please go ahead and just raise your hand. Anybody has any questions? I know some of you do. Let's see here. All right, let's go ahead with Ron, Ronnie. Hi there. Jan, that was lovely. And you did mention that you're going to put your contact information in the chat box. Yes, I will. Terrific, just, just making sure, because um, I would love to connect. Thank you. 
And great. we're also going to be sending an email with Super. all the all the contact information for great. all our speakers. So we'll make sure and we'll post them on our private Facebook group. Anybody else? All right. Take and thank you, time. Jen. Thank yeah. you, Jen, because it's timely, because it's true. We need to do that Facebook Live. So this, yeah, one more <laughs> this will give now. us an angelic boost. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, sweetheart. Thank you for being courageous, the first one. Titana, go ahead, sweetheart. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Jen, and it's my pleasure joining you. Uh, I just have a question. When you mentioned that we need to, at some point, you need to um, let it go and empty this, it was a little bit tricky for me to, um, because I don't know how to empty it. Like there were steps and one of them were empty and then call the guardian and uh, feel the energy and then open yeah, our chakra and, and receive. Um, could you please guide through? Absolutely. I'll, if you, I'll put my contact in. And if you contact me, I'll send you the chart with instructions, and then I'll send you uh, YouTube of how to actually do it. Very simple steps. And it's like anything, you'll develop a muscle. And now I say, take a deep breath through the nose and out through the mouth. And I'm there. It's like you get somatic memory. So you're training. And it's a jump start to release everything instantaneously. In the ancient priestess times, you didn't know if you were going to be called out of the stadium to be an orator. So it prepares you in a moment's notice to stand up and fearlessly just let this information flow. So thank you. And I'll put my contact in. Thank you. Appreciate it. That was a great question. Thank you, Titana. Anybody else? We may have time for two more. Come on, ladies. Engage. <laughs> Anybody has any questions in regards to what she just shared or even like clarity about certain things that she said? I might have a question for her, but I want to make sure that you all um, have the opportunity to ask the questions about your voice and your projection, what she just shared with us. All right. Okay. If not, I honor that. Uh, my question to you, Jen, I love what Titana had said, like how to open our channels to receive and to clear our minds because Often um, I find myself spontaneously being with the voice of, or, or where, where, where I'm in stillness and I call it holy listening. So I'll be just out of nowhere. I'll be just quiet and I'll, whatever it is that I'm doing, I get these chills all over my body. And I just know that I'm with divine and I'm with guide, with God and spirit. In fact, when you were speaking, I felt that, you know, that's why I was smiling. I was just going, okay, grace is here. And, and if that happened, is there anything that you could share with us um, that we could do or ask when we were listening, where we're in that, that space of, of the, being with the divine? Is there something that you recommend that we should be doing or should we just be in that space when it comes to, um, you know, whatever it is that we need to ask, whether it is for us, how do we show up authentically? Um, so that's my question, if that makes sense. Well, on the spiritual path, eventually you want to be in a space of connection to the messages, either hearing, clairaudient, clairvoyant. I'm a clairsentient. I feel chills. On the spiritual path, you get more and more in, in tune with that. And of course, it's harder to live in the regular world. But you need to practice and attune your tuning fork by meditation every single morning. And for me, the Be the Light process I say, I ask and intend to sit a sacred space. I remove all energies, even my own thoughts. I am commanding my energetic field to be an empty container of receivership, which is the mm. So the be the light, you know, you sit there meditating. Oh, do I need music? Am I comfortable? No, I'm using my voice. I ask and I intend to set myself separate from everything else. I remove all other energies and only what is mine to hear and do and know can come through me. So, but spirit's funny, I'll be brushing my teeth. Oh, well, your topic for meditation today is dead. <laughs> so anytime and sometimes if we're trying too hard for it or spirit's talking or preparing or your readiness and sometimes you're thinking hard about something else and it comes in. 
So you get to know your own guidance system. There's no one size fits all. I but love that. practice, meditate every morning. I love that. That's the perfect, perfect answer. Thank you so much, dear Jan. Well, thank I have you a question. Much. Yes. All right. Go for it. Yes. So Jan, I know that you talk about how your voice, you're sending out vibrations. It's like a cooling card. Um, is there, I, I am, I'm assuming this is the work that you do is to find out how your voice and like what you're projecting out into the world, you know, cause we're going to do these Facebook lives and you know, that energy is going to come out, right? Well, yes. And the good news is uh, if you're in the divine flow, then you're not broadcasting out that you don't trust men, that your mother was a bitch and you don't trust authoritative mother. You know? That's why the divine flow and the more you do it, it kind of pushes this stuff out. Mm -hmm. I have the voice bio to show you your fears and your emotions and your physical decompensation towards 20 C six disease states. I have the portal to track your ability to hold positive thoughts or to go off the track. But again, those are our slow boats. We don't have time to sit there with technology and monitoring and judging and labeling. When mm -hmm. you can jump into divine flow immediately. I mean, Love what's that. the choice? <laughs> yeah, that. Love awesome. That. Thank you. That's a great question. Higher vibrations dominate. And after a while, there's there's no down there, down there. It, the other work is important to bring it up to be conscious. I mean, I've done the hard work my whole life, but yeah, th that's the answer. By voice bio and portico. And again, for those of you who didn't have an opportunity to ask questions, thank you so much, by the way, Tracy. That was an awesome question. Uh, feel free to reach out to Jan. She'll be more than happy to uh, hop on a call and see how she could support you and help you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me look at the chat box, see if there's anything else. Other, Nothing but thank you and gratitude for you. Oh, I love you, Jan. I love it, Jan. Beautiful. And here's the, uh, the contact information is in there. Thank you so much. Excellent. 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 Very good. And a Facebook group. She's amazing. She still leads amazing uh, programs all the time. So make sure you connect with her. Next, are we ready for Natalia? Natalia is our next wonderful soul expert her topic today let's go ahead and start from the top and here she is how your attitudes towards your mothers directly affect or to your mothers directly affect your success and money how powerful is that now i want to say something about natalia i met her in illinois and it was literally a year before i left for those of you who don't know i lived in illinois for almost three years and a year before Spirit said, there's an angel here who lives 10 minutes from where you live. Can you believe it? We almost live in the same town. No accidents. And I met her. I don't remember how I met you, but I just, again, just like Jen, I go, okay, she's one of my earth angels. And she helped me with family entanglement work. She helped me with, again, I was doing the work with my father. Father, always one of those um, things. And with my mother, but still, she was an instrument of transformation for me during the time I was in Illinois. I was going through really, really, really dark times with my family and releasing and letting go of what's no longer serving me and that family entanglement. And she was just amazing. Um, and I'm so grateful that she showed up in a perfect divine timing for me. And I still continue to consult with her and I'm supporting her as well. We're supporting each other and she's become a friend with her family, wonderful husband and her son. And so I'm so grateful that you're here. And so the stage is yours. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put you on the stage and you can share your brilliance with us, dear Natalia. Here we go. Sahar, thank you so much again. Like, it's amazing, like what you do. And uh, I'm just like applaud you. And I'm very grateful for this course. I've been there and it's really, you really empower everyone. You empower all the ladies. And it's a very important time right now. Like what I saw last two years, like as a, I'm an astrologer, talk about a little bit more also. I could see uh, two years ago that it's a very deep transformation is coming up for everyone. And uh, then uh, like the world needs more love, more open hearts, more women like you and like people who are here today, like Jan. So you really like help us, even our family, you help us to come out. And I mean, right now we are ama amazing things. We are like, seeing like we just finished a course with 170 students and their lives all transformed 
And uh, today you're doing again amazing, amazing session, and again a very special day. So you always you're so much in tune with the universe, with the divine. That every time I tell you, today is one of the most uh, sacred spiritual holidays in Vedic tradition. Basically, it's um, a holiday of connecting to the to the spiritual master, to the divine teacher, kind of to to a god as a divine teacher. We are fasting till noon because those days like very sacred. We fast and then we will eat. So thank you so much for choosing this date. And also, uh, you just uh, invited Jan and I was listening. She is so much kind of touching the heart and again, helping us to open up more and to, to heal the world. And uh, what Jan was, and you was helping us to understand <clears throat> how not to be doing, but how to be being. And we can really help the world not to be afraid what to do and how to do, but we just need to be and share our love. So my topic today is, yes, yeah, you shared uh, how relationships with mothers affect financial state, right? And uh, probably you were, if you looked at that topic, you were thinking how, and maybe many of you kind of start understanding or thinking because of course the relationships with mothers affect kind of everything, right? So it's very, very interesting, like, as I will share it from the point of my practice, which I took from Bert Hellinger work. I'm an expert in family dynamics. And uh, my story is quite interesting, like story of my life is very interesting. Like I had a purpose from my very young age because I was interested in yoga, in spirituality since the age of four. And uh, I had uh, serious health issues when I was 13. The doctors want to operate my right right lung, and my grandma actually agreed to that. But I kind of realized that I could be an invalid, losing the right arm at 13. And uh, at that time, I was already kind of spiritual, though I was born in Kazakhstan, Soviet Union, and religion was prohibited. So, but I was trying to study knowledge and going to mountains. So I decided to try to heal myself at 13. And I talked to my parents, and uh, I said, "Let's try something." Let's try to go more to mountains. Let's try to do some breathing exercise. Let's try to do yoga. And I started doing meditation at that age. And actually I healed my lungs at the time. And then I realized that we need to be uh, in charge of our health. So like my interest to hidden got deeper and deeper. So I started actually helping people even energetically heal from that age. Then later uh, I became a nurse in Kazakhstan. But at that time I was very much interested in the spirituality. So actually like when my parents moved to America in 93, I moved into ashram for seven years, just like Mother Teresa life. We were helping people like not to do suicide. And it was very tough time in Soviet Union, like Soviet Union collapsed. So it was just devastation. So we were helping in orphanages, uh, bringing free food and helping people. Uh, we were helping people in prisons, like spreading spiritual knowledge, teaching people how to eat properly, like vegetarian lifestyle and how you should think about God, bringing the spirituality to former Soviet Union. So it was an amazing life at that time. But actually before I, met, before I went into ashram, I met my future husband. He was waiting for me. Till like he also got interested. So then we married in 98 and then uh, I had to come back to America to be with my parents, going through so many difficulties here in America, starting again and uh, helping my parents. But also like uh, what happened with me, because like uh, when, I be when I went into monastery, I switched from taking care of my health, just started to give and give and give. So my health was also under there going down. So we lost uh, also like I couldn't as I work in spiritual so hard but still some things were not open yet and uh, in our 13 years of marriage first 13 years of marriage we lost three pregnancies and I almost died from first ectopic pregnancy so I start looking inside and trying to find the ways deeper and deeper and deeper what I did not do yet and then this amazing practice as feminine constellation it was already uh, even like I've, I met with Feminine Constellation practice around 2004 and it helped immensely or like even to my husband to become more free with uh, financial decisions through connection to his ancestral lineage. And then uh, I did the work on, we did the work on uh, the child to understand why we're not having the child. 
and it was just amazing amazing work with our facilitator uh the future child kind of came to the work and showed why he's not coming and uh, what are the blockages and a couple months later i got pregnant and i had a beautiful child and a due date now he's nine <laughs> So like, not only that, of course, many, many instances, we don't have too much time, but family constellation work is an amazing work. It's um, a work which uh, actually it's not uh, kind of given by Bert Hellinger. Bert Hellinger, uh, he's a genius who had uh, his, like you can look up him, I write down and you can look about him. He passed away last year and the age of 94 and he was still working. So he was a pastor and, uh, from Germany, it had to be in uh, World War II and from German side. Uh, but then when he came to Africa, he had to, he had to, uh, he was on a mission to heal diseased uh, children. And then he was looking into how the African tribes heal their past, present and future. And then he put up in a modern way, the principles of how the system, uh, system, especially family system lives and works. And when, and when the disbalance in that system is happening, it's very on a subtle way and person even don't see that, but it actually pushes off a lot. So more and more I'm working in that and now like I practice it about 15 years and more and more consultations and I'm, I, I really feel that it's not, it's just a mercy and blessing of God that I could do that. And I'm really, really grateful because it's really amazing how even one session could uh, shift, could switch could open up the blockage and you could understand yourself better and you can feel yourself better and things which were not possible could just open up and um, so like right now actually like uh, i and i'm also an astrologer so I, when i work with people i use basically i use of course all my experience basically i have 35 years of practice of yoga meditation intuitive energy energetical healer healing i was a nurse and uh, like last 15 years i'm working with family constellation which became predominant but i also like a life coach certified life coach so my main desire in this life like also i had cancer <laughs> and survived and i realized that i got it to really again look why it was given to me and i got very uh, first it was tough because my son was four but it gave me such a great lessons to understand even deeper some blockage to work on and helping people now but what is like I really want people to tap in in their potential because we have huge potential, but we sometimes leave it only 10%. So my desire, especially like God gave me more yet, like time to live. And I really want people to see their potential because we don't even know who we are. Basically we see a really a fraction of ourselves. So with this work, it's possible. So we have let's to dive people. into let's dive into the connection with success and mother right now. Sure. Thank you so much, Sahar. So, like the mother, why is success and mother so much connected? Because what is our mother is? So, mother is not just a person with qualities, but mother is the gate of life, right? And also, what is mother? Mother, she's our first house and our first food. And what are we spending our money the most on? We're spending it on housing and food, food right? Yeah. Right. So, interesting enough, our ability to accept from the mother, to take from the mother, is showing the universe a divine mother that we need. Because often what we see uh, subconsciously, it's not consciously, we become like partners or parents to our parents. Because their greatness is too much for us, uh, or also we expect them to be different. So internally we are closed from accepting from them. And then the universe reads, oh, she has enough. Mm. So uh, the art of opening up our heart again to the mother as she is, as the gate of love, life, and say, mother, I'm your child. Please give me. This, if we can do that, the universe sees, oh, she's a child. She doesn't, she's not like wants to carry everything, but she's a child of your mother and she's receiving. Then the flow, which is always there, we are just opening up the door and it comes. And now we will do a small meditation. There is a bigger, but we will do just a short meditation. 
uh, to little bit connect with that feeling. Are you ready? We're ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So first, I would also like to be more clear, to be a clear vessel. I'll chant Om, and then you can also chant it with me, please. Inhale slowly and exhale. Three times on exhalation. And now just again, inhale slowly and exhale slowly. And focus on your heart. Just visualize yourself as a small you in your head. And visualize an elevator. And just take an elevator good in your heart. And embrace yourself there. Can you please visualize yourself in the room, in the middle of the room, in the center of the room? Just feel your feet, feel your hands. You're sitting in the middle of the room. And this room has beautiful windows. It's quite empty, but it's very good, warm atmosphere. And there is a door in the corner of the room. Please look at this door. And the door is opening up and your mother is coming. Look at your mother. Look at your eyes. She's beautiful. She's younger. Your mother is coming and this is the age just before she had you. Just before the moment you came to her womb. And this is the moment when she agreed to give you the space in her heart and in her womb. Your father gave the energy of all his ancestral lineage to your mother. And your journey began with your love and desire to have you. You stayed in her body from when she cared for you. She had many fears, but she wanted to have you. Her desire was as strong as she could because she gave that permission and that honor. She was given it by the Supreme Will. And then she had you. She opened your mind and your heart and your body with risks of losing your life and your life. And then she had you. And you are born. Look at her. She opened the doors of life for you. And look at her, and from the corner of your heart, how you can do that, please tell her, Dear Mother, you are my mother. Thank you that you gave me this life, and this was enough. I am grateful for today's day that you gave me this life, 
And please continue bless me with your love and support. Slowly inhale. And exhale. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, let's move forward. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen with you and introduce our wonderful third speaker. And Rachel, Rachel topic is about how to heal your inner child so you can truly show up for yourself, your clients, and your loved ones. And let me tell you, I am working currently with Rachel. She's amazing. She's helping me with some inner child work that is needing to be worked with and acknowledged and seen. And so I've rehired her. I have worked with her in the past, but any given time that I know that my inner children are acting out or they are, because I've recognized them because of the work that I've done with her in the past. And so I just hire her and she works with me and she's just amazing. And when we talk about me bringing these souls to you, it's not just anyone. It's people that I've worked with that I know personally and Rachel had really, really helped me anchor and understand the importance of me as a wise adult versus my children and recognize when and how to move forward with any situation when it comes to my inner children, how to recognize them, how to love them, how to embrace them. Now that I've moved to Newport Beach, I'm doing this work because I want to make sure that they are loved, they are seen, they're acknowledged, and they're a part of me and part of my life. And so with that being said, thank you, Rachel, for being who you are and the beautiful light that you are. And we're going to turn the stage to you so you're able to share your brilliance with everybody else. So the stage is yours. All right. Thank you, Sahar, for that really warm, lovely introduction. Um, you know, it just brings me so much pleasure to help people with their lives. And I'm going to invite you to speak a little bit louder for some reason. Okay. Oh, much better. Here we go. Okay. This microphone. Okay. <laughs> All right. So hello, everyone. I am Rachel Hope, and I help clients to heal those young hurt parts inside that are holding limiting beliefs. Um, these beliefs that often get in the way of the life that we really want to have. Um, I also help clients to clear emotional pain from their body using the body code. Now, I'm really passionate about this work because it creates real changes. The changes that help us to be the person that we're truly meant to be without the burden of early programming, trauma, and neglect weighing us down. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by programming. Um, but I truly believe that our soul picks a body and picks our family that will trigger the wounds that our soul has been carrying from lifetime to lifetime. Um, and as leaders, most of us have been around the block a time or two. We tend to be old souls. And as old souls, we tend to pick pretty challenging lives. Uh, we have big plans to heal the collective. Um, and a big part of how we heal the collective and help the collective is to heal those wounds in ourselves, which sends that healing vibration out into the field that we all share. So as we heal our wounds, we help other people heal things that have gone through similar similar kinds of woundings um, and I believe that a huge part of our life mission is to heal what happened when we were young and innocent so that we can fully take on the other life missions that we sign up for. Um, I don't believe that I would have the amazing life partner that I do or be able to run my own business if I hadn't transformed my self-esteem and self-worth by loving those hurt little kids inside and I do say kids plural most of us have many parts inside. Um, I even say that we can have inner adults. Um, anytime there's unresolved trauma, a part of our psyche will tend to split off and hold on to that. Um, and so those are some of the parts that we might work with um, in an inner child healing session. Um, my own healing journey brought me to inner child work. A couple of really trusted mentors helped me to see. I was replaying dynamics in my romantic relationships with my dad. Um, I was heavily abused as a child in many ways over many years and the impact has been tremendous on my life. 
I tolerated inappropriate behavior. I had no boundaries. I allowed unsafe people to stay in my life even after they'd shown me that they weren't safe and trustworthy. Um, I even started a couple businesses before the business I have now, but I wasn't able to follow through because I just didn't have the confidence or the belief that I deserved good things or that I could accomplish good things, even though Dean's List at UC Berkeley, good at every sport I ever tried, like pretty much anything I put my mind to, I could do, yet inside, I didn't feel very good about myself because of that deep wounding from when I was young. See, when we experience abuse and neglect when we're young, we tend to make it about ourselves. We're just too young to know that hurt people hurt people and that the way people treat us is about them and not about us. But our mind is really young. Our subconscious mind is really open when we're young, um, like sponges absorbing everything that happens and creating deep beliefs, beliefs that run 95% of our life. That's where the subconscious comes into play. Beliefs like we're not deserving, something's wrong with us, people don't care about us, the world is not safe. These are really common beliefs that I work with with, with clients, with people who come to me. And these beliefs can make it really difficult to show up as leaders. How can we inspire other people when we're too afraid to even be seen? So I'm gonna to talk today about how these programs from childhood often get in the way of being our most authentic, empowered self and how we can change this. So the cost of these programs, and by programs, I mean beliefs. Um, in a lot of ways, our mind is like a computer, right? So how we program it, the beliefs we put in really determines a lot about how we show up in the world and how the world shows up for us. Like it, it's a big part of where we manifest and attract from. And so a lot of these beliefs that come from abuse or neglect, and nobody really has a perfect childhood, right? Even great parents are stressed out from time to time. The costs can be enormous to us. Personally, we might beat ourselves up. We might carry a lot of shame. We might doubt our feelings, our abilities, or our, or our ideas. In relationships, it can be difficult to speak up. We might be walled off, not share our feelings. And this makes intimacy and connection, the kind that we really desire, almost unobtainable for a lot of us when we're walled off and we don't feel safe enough to express ourselves. Professionally, we don't go after our dreams. We're afraid to share our gifts. We play small. We don't think we're worthy and deserving of abundance. These programs are powerful. They're much more powerful than the conscious mind. Um, like I said, the subconscious runs about 95% of our life. And so we wanna shift our beliefs and this deep subconscious level. Um, this is largely where we attract from. And so think about it. Many of us grow up where money is scarce, viewed as scarce or hard to get. Even if our parents have a lot of money, that's, it tends to be the way people talk about money. Um, and so we grow up with this message as money is hard to get um, and often that we're not good enough. And so you could see how these messages, very common messages that people grow up with would really affect our ability to be leaders, create businesses and receive abundance for our gifts and skills. So there's a few things that I really want you to take away from today. What you don't know can hurt you. We often don't know what's lurking in our subconscious. It's that hidden mysterious part of our mind. So we can go to workshops, read books, even do a lot of traditional talk therapy. And these are great starting places for recognizing what's going on in our life. But we often don't see the life-changing results or the breakthroughs that we want because it only penetrates into that conscious part of our mind, that 5% part. Um, well, we can get an idea about what's in our subconscious by looking at the patterns in our life. And the good news is we don't have to know exactly what our limiting beliefs are. Uh, we just need to focus more on teaching ourselves, our consciousness, the positive life affirming beliefs that we want to run our life. Um, now, I like to work with the inner child to access the subconscious mind. There are many ways to change what's in your subconscious, right? Um, but most of us do not have an unconditionally loving and supportive relationship with ourselves. And inner child work is a great way to do that. And starting your own business, being a leader, being seen, we need to support ourselves. We need to be able to nurture ourselves. We need to be able to boost ourselves up, right? It's a very important thing. Um, not everyone is able to step up and, and be in the light and, and be a leader. Um, it's a scary thing, right? So Big vision, big goals requires big support. So it's great, you know, to 
have someone like Sahar whose whose life mission is to support leaders. And we also wanna be able to support ourselves. The second thing I'd like you to take away is that sometimes the things that are holding us back is a matter of life and death. See, when we're young, we need our parents to survive. And if our parents are hostile, we have to figure out how to stay safe by not being seen, by not having needs or not speaking up. This is the way we ensured our survival and we didn't get hurt as much. Most of us have a hurt part inside who looks like they're sabotaging us, but in reality, they're just trying to keep us safe. It wasn't safe to be seen before or to show our true selves. They don't want you to do that now. Have you been thinking about a business, a webinar, or a program, something that you want to launch or create, but something always seems to get in the way or you get distracted or you feel like you're not good enough? This could be a hurt part inside who's actually just trying to keep you safe. And the third thing I'd really like you to take away from today is that we all have hurt inner parts who influence our thoughts. Most of us suffer from an inner critic. And these parts, these hurt parts, hold the key to healing ourselves and transforming ourselves. These parts are often the parts that we need to work with to quiet those inner gremlins who don't think we're capable, good enough, or don't think that we deserve to charge good money for our skills. And by cultivating a relationship with these hurt parts, they will begin to trust us over time and eventually believe what we're saying. They've spent decades believing certain things. Um, so with time and some repetition, we can actually transform their self-esteem, self self-worth and their beliefs. And we, teach, we show this and we teach them with our words and our actions that they matter, they're safe and that they're worthy. When they feel good about themselves, we feel good about ourselves. We want all those parts inside to have rock solid self-esteem. And I'm not saying this is something that happens overnight. It's a, you know, it's a lifelong journey um, to loving and healing ourselves on a more deep and profound level. But as we heal those parts inside that don't feel so good about themselves, it transforms how we show up, how we feel about the world and how the world shows up for us. Um, so I have a tip for you. I really loved what Jan shared. Um, I know I tend to avoid doing live things, um, and I'm really going to take to heart Jan, Jan's tips. I mean, I just started yawning and shivering as soon as she pulled the bowl out and created the container, and I really love that. Um, and what I recommend from kind of like my point of view of how I work with people is when you're feeling nervous before a big call or presentation or maybe a big talk with your partner, I'm going to an event, you know, when the world opens up again, going to events, social anxiety is really common, just to take a few minutes to talk to that scared part inside. They're probably young. How would you talk to a scared eight-year-old? Some things you might, you might say to them, remind them how talented they are. <clears throat> remind them that they're helping to make this world a better place, that they deserve good things, and they don't have to be perfect. And another thing I'd love for you to consider is that when we feel good, we are a magnet to clients and to abundance. Science has even shown this, that our emotions affect the photons around us, the very fabric of reality. My boyfriend was the first to point this out, and now I've noticed it over and over, that when I'm feeling good, clients come with ease. Like, I don't even have to try. Like, I get so many of my consult calls were like, yeah, spirit guided me to your website. Um, and while it's unlikely that we're gonna feel good all the time, by creating a loving, nurturing relationship with ourselves, um, we can recover more quickly and we can spend less time down in the dumps when we're able to nurture ourselves on that deep level. Um, so think, I invite you to think back to when you were really hurting as a child. What did you really need to hear from a trusted adult? What would have really helped to heal that pain that you were feeling? Maybe it's not your fault. You didn't deserve that. It's not okay for people to be mean to you. You're just as important as anyone else. It's okay to make mistakes. You're not alone. I'm here with you. I'm keeping you safe. You deserve to have nice things. You deserve to be wealthy. You have important things to say. So talking to these hurt parts inside, I've seen this change people's lives over and over again. Like I said, I truly do not believe I would have the amazing partner that I do or be able to run the business that I do if I hadn't done this for myself. Um, I worked with a client for a few months 
um, who comes from a culture where you have to be the good girl. You have to obey the rules. You have to put yourself last. You have to cater to the man. And don't you dare be more successful than the man. And you have to wait on everyone like a slave and suppress your own dreams and desires. In addition to this heavy cultural programming, he spent several years as a child illegally living in a refugee camp. And at any moment, she could be found out and she and her whole family could be taken to prison or worse. It literally was not safe to be seen. And so she came to me unhappy with her marriage and wanting to start her business of helping women in blended families. She was tired of being the good girl, doing what her husband wanted and not going after her own dreams and passions. And over the course of the few months we, of working together, she started making changes that felt too scary to do before. Because now she had a relationship with her precious inner child. And this was the motivation she needed to start standing up for herself. This was the motivation I needed to cut people out of my life that weren't respecting me. And I've seen it with a lot of my clients that maybe we aren't able to do it for ourselves, but once we start really loving that precious little innocent one inside, it calls us to take action, to say the uncomfortable things, to get out of our comfort zone. And so she was able to stop obeying the rules that she didn't create, that her mother-in-law had created for her family. Um, she started making requests of her husband to help her around the house, to take her out. Um, she stopped catering to her adult stepchildren who demanded that she washed and cooked for them. They were in their 20s. And she finally felt safe that even if her husband wasn't going to be able to meet her request, because now she had shifted, right? Now her husband had the opportunity to rise up and meet her or it was, there was not gonna be compatible, right? But either way, she felt okay and she felt safe because she knew that she was there for herself and that she deserved a partner and not a parent to rule over her. It was time to put herself first. And she started her business of supporting overwhelmed women in blended families. And so it's just such a pleasure for me to see people transforming their life. There are so many ways to help people on this path. I knew I was supposed to help people. I didn't know how, and my own healing journey brought me to this place. Um, and some of us um, didn't have nurturing, loving parents, right? So some of us have a hard time giving ourselves that compassionate, nurturing words. And that's when a guide and a facilitator such as myself can really come in handy, the, the fast track, right? And so if you would like support with creating a nurturing, loving relationship with yourself, I invite you to book a complimentary discovery call with me where we talk about your healing goals and how I can best support you with the different kinds of sessions that I offer. Um, I'll, put, I'll put it in the chat, but the book page on my website, rachelhopehealing.com. And I also have a free gift for you on that website as well. A pop-up window will come up. I created a pretty extensive 25-page PDF guide on starting to work with your inner child, even complete with workshop with worksheets. So you can, you can get going um, yourself. Um, it's valuable skills to be able to nurture and love yourself um, and to take care of yourself when things don't go that well or when you're scared or out of your comfort zone. Um, and so thank you so much for this time and for your attention. Um, and that's, that's all I have to share for right now, but I'd love to take any questions if anyone has any questions or comments. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And by the way, the guides that she has, 25 pages, I refer to it all the time. It's fabulous. She's so generous. And again, her information will be mailed, emailed to you, each and every one of you for Jan and for Natalia and for Rachel. And that each and every one of you will have an opportunity to connect to them directly and see if they are there to, they could be there to support you and guide you. With that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and any questions for uh, um, Rachel, let's go ahead and take them. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and reopen the lines for any questions for Natalia. I apologize, Natalia. I don't know what happened, but we will maybe stay a little bit after, uh, over because it's 1027 right now. And I do honor uh, a lot of you. So I want to make sure that uh, each and every one of you have an opportunity to ask the questions for the ladies. So let's go ahead and start with Natalia. Anybody has, not Natalia, I'm sorry, with Rachel. Anybody has any questions for Rachel, please wave your hand. 
and we'll go ahead and about any and, and her child work. Okay. Her question was she wasn't sure if I said what we don't know can or can't hurt us. Um, I said can. What I meant was that we can develop really rock solid sense of self esteem and self worth on that conscious level. But if we don't realize on that deep subconscious level that we're carrying around that pain and that we're not worthy and we're that not deserving, that is what can hurt us, even though we don't know that that exists. And so that's why I really recommend shifting beliefs and so forth and self-esteem at that deep level, which I like to do through inner child work. There are many ways to access the subconscious. And so we may not know exactly what those limiting beliefs are, but by looking at patterns in our life, we can have an idea, right? Do people walk all over us? Do people take advantage of us? Does it seem like no one ever listens to us? These kind of things. Um, and so we can work on the positive beliefs that we want without necessarily knowing word for word what some of our limiting beliefs are. And I think of them as neural connections in the brain, which is what they are. And they're like pathways, right? So right now, a lot of the negative ones maybe are really well-worn and easy for the brain to go. But as we start creating the more positive pathways and start and tread on them by teaching our inner child this by thinking of this this starts to get wider and more well-worn and then the older ways the older ways you talk about will start to kind of grow over get weeds not as easy to go that way so the brain wants to go towards the new positive ways i love it thank you so much that was great 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 question thank you perfect all right uh excellent we're still getting the thank yous thank yous anybody else has any questions for either Rachel or Natalia or even Jan that you have an opportunity to ask right now. Maybe we could take two more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Anybody else you want to wave your hand? If not, okay, good. Rima, let's go for it. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. See, some awesome. work, some don't. We don't know what is awesome. going on here. <laughs> so it's just uh, a thank you for all three great uh, soulful leaders who actually presented today. Jan, as always, listening to you through SOAR and on Facebook, your life, I am immediately and suddenly transformed into that beautiful light that you keep talking about. I had shivers and chills from the moment you spoke till the end. And I was like, it was fantastic and phenomenal. And thank you. My heart kept on vibrating until you were done. <laughs> and it was fabulous. I really, really, really appreciate you love to you all. To Natalia, I'm going to be honest, the moment that you started with that meditation, I felt my, my heart and my voice was choking. I started crying. You, I, there are some times when I try to meditate and I try to visualize, I, it's very difficult for me to visualize myself in a setting. And I have an issue as well with the mother and everything. And it was instantaneous, I was able to see my mom. And it's something that I've been pushing her for the longest time ever. And, you know, Sahar and some of you know about that. It was very, very difficult. And just bringing her into, into my conscious, so to speak. And I was like, I saw her immediately flashed back to her pictures, you know, the black and white pictures of long ago before I was even born or the beautiful colored with these, charleston pants if you remember those pants <laughs> yeah. and everything and i just had this connection and i was like i started crying it was like tears of relief maybe that's a sign that i have to try to reach out because i've been trying to reach out lately thank you and with thank rachel you. yeah you mentioning that working on inner child i had this aha moment when you mentioned we could have inner child like children and it could be as well adults. And I was like, oh my God, that resonates a lot. And we never think about it. We we just tend to think about one thing, one person, one one issue. And it's a comp it's like it's a complex web of all of those. So I feel Sahar, Yani, I don't know how much we can say, like kudos for you. You are always um directed and in some way you can always bring the right people the right time. And I was like, oh my God, this is another slash in the face slap in the face you know <laughs> throwing cold water in my face kind of wake up call today i was like oh my god this is so amazing and i'm so grateful for all of you for sharing your insight it, i was deeply touched 
Oh. I was deeply touched to the heart and thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. We love you, Rima. We love you so much. Let's go give her just like a little energy. Love, 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 love. Receive, 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 receive. This is for you, Rima. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she spoke, I think, on behalf of all of us. It couldn't be a more perfect divine timing to almost wrap it up. Now, I know some of you need to go, but if anybody has a really like um, a question in their heart that they really need to ask any of these ladies, anybody here has any question, like it's a must for me to ask either Jan, Rachel, or Natalia, please raise your hand. We could maybe take one or two questions because I want to honor you. All right. Okay, well, let's go ahead and just, you know, send the lap, the computer love, 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 love. I guess when we bring such power topics, these things happen. You know, there are some forces out there beyond our control that want to not support this work. That's why each and every one of us need to show up, ladies, need to show up and share our voices and work on our family entanglement and do our inner child work in order for us to stand that vibrational frequency so we're able to support and heal humanity. Again, the more of us are on the path of enlightenment, the more of us that are going to create more healing opportunities for humanity, for our earth, for our world. So I'm gonna end of that note. For those of you who are interested in learning more about these wonderful ladies, please go ahead and leave your information. We could reach out to you, those of you who are brand new. Also, be join our Soulful Leader, uh, Soulful Leader Facebook uh, community. We have about 3,200 people that are there, and you could promote your business every Wednesday. In addition, if anybody's interested in, in uh, Wanting to learn more for those of you who are brand new about our Soulful Leadership in April that's going to be launching with amazing people. Also, please do reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to become my friend on Facebook or saharnafal1 at gmail.com. saharnafal1 at gmail.com. Uh, uh, Julia, you could go ahead and jot that down. Uh, other than that, you all have a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous rest of the week and a wonderful and amazing and loving weekend. I so appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, uh, Natalia. Thank you, Jan. I don't know what's going on. See, the computer has a mind of its own. Thank you, Rachel, for your time and effort. Mwah. Can we just say goodbye, everybody? Just bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Bye. <laughs>